Oh yeah. Folks, it is time for a test night episode. And the tent of choice is the Light Fighter Catamount 2 military tent. This is a legit piece of military surplus used by our armed forces today. And I am very excited to get this out into the rain, into the snow to see how well it performs. Talking about the weather, later on tonight, a big winter storm is moving in and this will last roughly two days. Now, over the course of the two days, it really is anyone's guess as to what is going to happen. It is going to be a combination of snow, sleet, freezing rain, rain, back to snow, back to sleet, and so on. One forecast says that we can get a quarter inch of ice. The other says that we can get five inches of sleet. So who knows? I have no clue. I do know this, that no matter what, this tent is going to see some action and I cannot wait to see how well it performs. Welcome to the Outdoor Gear Review, everyone. My name is Luke, of course, just in case you don't know. With this series, Test Night, this is all about putting tents to the test in terms of waterproofness, stormproofness, ventilation, condensation, and moisture control. It's a series of tests that can last overnight or even multiple day. And with this series so far, we've seen many tents come and go, some that have done great, and some that have failed miserably. The question becomes, how well will this tent perform? Let's find out together. I tell you what everyone, I like this tent and I really like the setup process. It is so incredibly easy. In the matter of minutes, you can have this tent set up and ready to go. It is very, very impressive. For the most part, everyone, the setup process is complete. I'm just finishing up with some small touches, namely staking out the sides, opening the vents, and getting everything ready for tonight. The setup process is complete. And let me tell you, that was very, very easy. That is one aspect to this tent which I absolutely love. You can set this up in less than five minutes. And for a four season tent, that is impressive. Now that everything's been set up, all we have to do is await the storm. Before the weather hits, I would like to hear from you all. What do you all think is going to happen with the Catamount 2 tent? Are there going to be any issues when it comes to leaking? How do you think it's going to handle snow loading? Do you suspect there's going to be issues with the tent poles when it comes to breaking down the tent? That is an issue, that is a concern. This is something that I've experienced with other four season tents that have external poles, or as some would say, an exoskeleton like this. When you have poles on the outside, those poles have a tendency to freeze shut, right? The moisture falls, they freeze into place there at the joints, and it could take forever to warm them up, to melt them so you can get them apart. It can be a huge pain in the ass, it really can. So yeah, anyways everyone, we will find out together how well this performs and we'll see together if there are any issues. Let's do this everyone, let's do this.
With this storm, it really has done a great job of proving my point in regards to the external poles. Here we have the poles that are on the outside of the tent and they are coated in ice. If I was to break down this tent right now, first off, I would have to have waterproof gloves on, otherwise my hands would get wet. And two, every single one of these joints are now frozen in place. Depending on how frozen they are, they may come apart fairly easy, but then again, maybe not. It might be one of those things where I'm sitting there <sighs> blowing on it to warm it up. And let me tell you, that is an awful thing to do. <laughs> it really is. It can take so much time. It's not fun, but sometimes it is required with setups like this. Over the course of the night, freezing rain began, and there has been just a little bit of sleep mixed in with it. And what we have here is an ice covered tent. This tent is coated in ice. And so far it looks like it is handling the weight very well. I'd say there's about two tenths of an inch of ice on here. At the moment, it's not raining too hard. So let's go ahead and open this up and see if there's been any sort of leaking. <laughs> All of this is frozen. Opening up the door presents us with good information. As you all can see here, the body is away from the fly, so you don't have to worry about moisture falling into the tent when you open it up. That's good. Looking around, I do not see any moisture on the body itself. Everything looks good. Nice and dry. My plan for today is basically to keep an eye on the tent, see how well it performs, in regards to whatever falls from the sky. Supposedly, it's going to be a mix of rain, freezing rain, sleet, and then snow later on tonight. Snow is supposed to continue through tomorrow. Speaking of tonight, I will be inside of the tent tonight to see how well it performs in regards to condensation, moisture control, and so on. I have high hopes for this tent because so far, I've been very, very impressed with what I see here. But for now, let's see how well this tent does in the rain, in the snow, and in the ice. Okay, well, that is not good news right there, folks. This tent has been leaking. There's water all over the body of this tent. Let's see what it's like on the inside. Oh no. Wow. This tent has leaked a lot. You might be able to see it, but my backpack is wet. It's wet over here. The floor has substantial amounts of pulling. What has happened here? Wow. Oh my God. Wow. Well, everyone, with this test night episode, this tent has absolutely failed. Unfortunately, there is water everywhere. I haven't been up here to check on this tent since early this afternoon. Since that point in time, this tent has leaked substantially substantially this is in my opinion unacceptable the amount of water that's inside of this tent while not as bad as the river country tent or the msr tent this is without a doubt unacceptable in my opinion not only for any civilian like myself but for our soldiers this is not acceptable at all for your money you deserve better and our soldiers definitely do check this out everyone that is on my sleeping bag that is substantial pulling, and there's water everywhere. 
We have the water on my backpack. Then we have the pulling here. We have some drips over here. This entire area up here is wet. Wow. You can see that point right there where the body attaches to the fly. That's where it's leaking at. There. And also there. The same issue applies. You have leaking up there at that attachment point. It goes all the way down. The same issue is over here as well. As it stands right now, I do not recommend that you purchase the Light Fighter Catamount 2 tent. It leaks, plain and simple, or at least this version does, the version that I have. I will contact the company, we'll go from there. But um, yeah, to say that I'm disappointed would be an understatement. I really had high hopes for this tent. The setup process is so easy. And for a military tent, for a four season tent, that's so rare. This tent has a lot of possibility, but leaking on this scale at this magnitude, it's not acceptable, not at all. Not for 500 and whatever dollars this costs. I am not finished with this tent. I will come back to it at some point in time and do more testing. But since my sleeping gear, everything in here is soaking wet, there's no point to, <laughs> to stay inside of this because the results are compromised. As far as a ventilation test goes, as far as condensation and whatnot, the results are going to be skewed because everything in here is wet. The fly is already soaking wet, so it doesn't matter. Without a doubt, this is incredibly disappointing. But folks, that is what this series is all about. It's about taking these products out into the real world to see how well they perform, or in this case, how badly, how poorly. It has been an interesting day though, when it comes to weather. It started off as freezing rain for many hours, then it turned over to rain, then it turned to sleet and snow, and it's hovered around 34 degrees. Right now, it's not freezing rain, it's misting just a little bit. It did rain for numerous hours, and it was moderate, it wasn't super heavy by any means. And that's what makes this so surprising. This tent should have performed better. The conditions were not severe enough to justify this much water inside of this tent. For this episode of Test Night, that's pretty much it, folks. There's not much else to talk about. I will contact the company. I will have a follow-up video, if not videos. So make sure to stay tuned to the channel. Hit the subscribe button, bell notification. Make sure to hit the thumbs up because that does help the channel quite a bit. You can support the Outdoor Gear Review on Patreon here on YouTube if you want to. You can join the Wolf Pack. I do appreciate it. Everyone, take care. Strength and honor. Oh, before I go. Make sure to comment down below, share your thoughts about this tent. What do you all think about the leaking that took place? And were your predictions right? Did you pause the video and take a guess at what would happen? Hmm, okay. On to the next, everyone. Strength and honor.